Thank you, Dr. Grothy, Dr. Lowry. So, uh, some disclosures. So, you know, this is an old debate going back a few years. You know, they used to debate which biologic to use, maybe both. And then four years ago, we had the other debate, which biologic to use. But today's important debate will look at these uh, important drug combinations. So, you know, Jim Cytobine, if we go back, um, it's actually kind of impressive uh, how uh, small and really not very different these two arms were going back to the original uh, Skip Burris publication in 1997 of uh, one antimetabolite, 5-FU versus another one, Jim Cytobine, uh, small response rate, a little bit survival difference and uh, one year survival of 18%, but mainly it was based on a made up endpoint of clinical benefit of response, uh, which was a composite endpoint that eliminated a lot of people who were originally registered due to a run in for, um, for uh, pain control. Uh, nonetheless, it was FDA approved and became kind of the standard for more than a decade. And we had many years of randomized trials of, as Jordi Berlin likes to say, gemcitabine versus gemcitabine plus your drug here. And uh, actually, Dr. Lowry was good enough to put up a slide that had about half of those trials listed, but there were many more and included things even such as um, MMPIs and every biologic. So now it seems like we're going to a new paradigm of gemabraxane versus gemabraxane plus your drug here. And the question is, can we do better than that? So uh, Fulfirinox uh, was uh, a, uh, published originally in this randomized study from the French Accord group. And uh, as you can see here, it includes oxaliplatin, leucovorin, bolus 5-FU, and then an infusion, uh, and the arenotecan as well. In the original study, the uh, filgrastim was not routinely administered uh, primarily. So based on the results as, as published in the New England Journal, you can see here that it, it was uh, mainly performance status zero and one, but two thirds of the patients were performance status one, only about one third were performance status zero. And uh, mainly uh, patients with uh, body and tail lesions uh, and uh, very few stents. So this is a somewhat selected population, but probably reflective of the group that we land up treating with um, advanced disease. And uh, as you have already seen uh, from Dr. Lowry as well, the one-year survival was 48% with Fulfirinox compared to 21% with gemcitabine. The median um, uh, survival was 6.8 months for gemcitabine, which is what we've pretty much come to expect since the first trials, but it was almost double with fulfirinox, and the hazard ratio was 0 0.57, which is a fairly remarkable difference after many, many negative studies. Uh, in addition, uh, the response rate was kind of unprecedented of 31%, over 30% compared to uh, nine percent, nine and a half percent in the gemcitabine arm. So in terms of toxicity, I think this is what has really given people the most hesitation in adopting the full Fernox regimens. Uh, very high incidence of uh, grade three, four neutropenia, nearly half the patients had it, but only five percent had febrile neutropenia uh, and about uh, nine percent had grade three, four thrombocytopenia. Uh, while fatigue, diarrhea, and neuropathy were significant in this, uh, nonetheless, the quality of life was better. And I think this is really quite reflective of the fact that you have a very effective chemotherapy program. Even though it has its own toxicities, uh, the quality of life is improved because you're relieving the symptoms of pancreatic cancer. And those of you who've used this regimen, I mean, you, you know this from your own personal experience. A lot of times people come in with anorexia, back pain, severe uncontrolled pain, and after a couple cycles, they're much better and their quality of life is good. And in addition, the quality of time to de further deterioration of quality of life was um, 
uh, less than six months in the gemcitabine arm, and it wasn't even reached in the fulfirinox arm. So uh, it was quite a bit better there. Now, the MPAC trial, which you heard about as well, uh, had a very similar control arm with 6.7 months median survival for gemcitabine, but the, um, the experimental arm of gem plus abraxane was only eight and a half months, not nearly the 11 months that we saw in the uh, in the Prodige study, and this is a much larger study of 800 patients. So control arms, very comparable, experimental arms, pretty different. And uh, again, you can see here some of the differences between the two arms. If you look at the Fulfirinox versus the NAB paclitaxel gemcitabine, the response rate was much higher, the disease control rate was much higher, the one year, uh, the median survival and the one year survival were much higher. So it seems like this should be the regimen of choice. It, when you actually line up the uh, toxicities of the two studies next to each other, there really isn't that much difference um, uh, between the two of them. And so at Yale, we uh, undertook to modify this a little bit, and this is now a published regimen, uh, both in uh, medical oncology, and it'll be, it's in press for Brit British Journal of um, Cancer for our larger study in both locally advanced and metastatic disease. Uh, we attenuated the, the bolus 5-FU and the arena TCAM both by 25%. We didn't drop the bolus because of the considerations that that may be important uh, in terms of the anti-metabolite. And we added um, pegylated GCSF and a prepotent routinely to control some of the nausea and the neutropenia. So uh, you can see here the Yale modified fulfirinox uh, in the metastatic disease versus the, uh, the Prodige study. Uh, we had very similar activity uh, in terms of all the endpoints, which was not statistically significant, but we had less neutropenia, less fatigue, and less vomiting, which were all statistically significant. So uh, that did seem to uh, make this, the regimen more manageable and uh, easier to tolerate. And uh, I would like to also point out that we have an ongoing trial now where we've already done the phase 1B run-in of pegylated hyaluronidase with modified fulfirinox as a cooperative group trial. This is a SWOG study, SWOG 1313, in which uh, Ramesh Ramanathan is the PI. And we've moved on to the randomized phase two, which is about half accrued now. Um, and uh, we, I think, are seeing that it is very possible to do a study using the full, a modified fulfirinox backbone, which is not the Yale modified fulfirinox, but a modification uh, with, um, with a biologic. So in summary, I think that fulfirinox is, should be considered the standard of care for uh, fit patients who have advanced pancreatic cancer. The toxicity can be attenuated with uh, supportive care and some dose reductions that do not seem to affect the uh, activity. The quality of life is uh, quite uh, good when with a very effective regimen, and it is a reasonable backbone for biologics, which we can see as feasible. So um, I think that summarizes the argument for fulfilling that.